Welcome back to Chips and Salsa, where we talk about security at Intel. I'm Crobe. And I'm Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Hey, Crobe. You know what time it is? Yeah. It's Patch Tuesday. Ha <laughs> 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 ha, Patch Tuesday. Hit me every Jerry. time, Crobe. <laughs> I know. And today, with the August Patch Tuesday, we're releasing 46 advisories addressing 80 vulnerabilities with CVSS scores ranging from a 3.2 low all the way up to an 8.8 high. Now, looking at the whole section of them, about 47.5% were discovered internally by Intel researchers and security people, and our bug bounty program discovered another 50%, bringing the total of all of Intel's security investments in people and programs up to 97.5% of all vulnerabilities talked about this month and disclosed found by Intel in our programs, our proactive methods. Now, inside this bundle, uh, there's going to be firmware and processor updates. There are four discontinued product notices, and the vast majority of the updates this month are software updates. So we encourage all, the, all of our customers to go out and to the Intel Security Center and to find out more. Read the advisories that are applicable to you. And But today, we have a special focus, right, Jerry? Yes. So following up on our interview with Daniel Mohimi about his uh, downfall paper, or as we refer to it at Intel, the gathered data sampling issue, our guest in this episode is friend of the show, Vivek Tuwari, who is uh, here to describe the issue and our guidance around it. Right. And this is in regards to Intel SA00828. And Vivek is a, a longtime friend of the show, a really important partner with Jerry and I and the other folks within Intel. He's a vice president here inside of Intel Product Assurance and Security and is an extremely technical dude. So let's bring him on here and talk about gather data sampling and what customers need to know about it. Vivek, welcome back to the show. Can you start us off by telling us what your role here at Intel is? Sure. Hi, Jerry Crowe. I'm glad to be here again. I lead Intel's response to product issues, uh, and I'm responsible for developing and delivering mitigations for those to our customers and our ecosystem. As part of that, I also lead the Intel Platform Update Program for the IPU. We've talked about that before here. Uh, and then driving learning from these issues to improve our future products is also part of this role. Nice. Well, we are, uh, look forward to working with you on a daily basis, Vivek, but today we're here to talk about Intel SA00828, which we refer to as gather data sampling. Uh, can you tell us what gather is and what is the issue uh, found by the researcher who reported it to us? Gather instructions are part of the Intel AVX2 and AVX512 instruction set. Uh, gather instructions are executed in targeted use cases to optimize the data movement of certain vectorized workloads. Uh, and they do this by providing more optimized execution when loading values from a disjunct set of memory locations, basically what we call batch loads. Mm -hmm. The issue that uh, the researcher Daniel Mohini found is that uh, under certain conditions on some of our older processors, when the gather instructions perform loads from memory, stale data may be inferred when combined with transient side channels. This is stale data that's present in some internal microarchitectural structures on that same core. This is what we refer to as gather data sampling or GDS for short. This is a data sampling transition, transient execution attack and that does not provide the malicious actor the ability to choose which data is inferred and it can't be used to read arbitrary memory locations. For example. Those are great points. Um, now, GDS is a complex data sampling issue. Can you maybe describe the rigor behind our Intel triage and the analysis of issues like this? Yeah. So when we find issues like this internally, or if they're reported by external researchers, uh, we have our experts representing many different disciplines, including core architecture, system software, and our own offensive security researchers, who then collaboratively work to identify the root cause of the issue as well as its potential variants. Mm -hmm. uh, and once they have developed a mitigation, we develop tests to validate the effectiveness of the mitigation and also ensure that new products in development do not have similar issues. So it's part of all the, the things that we do proactively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, an issue like this may, you know, get some media attention. So it's important to help uh, customers and understand what the threat is so that they can evaluate their own risks, right? So can you talk about the requirements for an attack to potentially be successful? Yeah. So for GDS, uh, an attacker would need to achieve local code execution on an affected system and be able to execute malicious code on the same physical code as a victim. Uh, that attacker then uses gather instructions in their own code to transiently infer stale data. Now, this stale data is limited to what was already present in internal structures called the vector register files on that same code. The attacker then needs to transmit the results over a covert channel. So as I alluded to before, this kind of transient sampling attack does not give the attacker the ability to directly control or specify what data can be inferred. Mm -hmm. Now, um, after our internal team got a look at this, so we're fairly confident in stating that the exploiting this issue outside of a controlled lab environment would be very complex. Can you maybe expand upon what we mean by that? Yeah. So what we mean by that is that in most use cases, you know, one would already have safeguards in place to not allow untrusted software to locally run on your system. So for example, if your operating system, browser, applications, and anti-malware software are up to date. So basically the normal precautions a system administrator or user would take to protect themselves from malware. Mm -hmm. A GDS attacker would need to circumvent all of those safeguards. <laughs> now let's consider a multi-tenant system where the use case is such that an untrusted tenant may be allowed to run on the same core on the same system. Now, when there are multiple users who share the same core in such an environment, especially when the core is oversubscribed, tenants are constantly changing. And with that, data usage is constantly changing. Therefore, the window for an attacker to target particular data for GDS sampling is limited in a real world cloud deployment scenario. Mm -hmm. And where systems are running only trusted code or where access controls authorize only trusted users, the risk is very low. Great point. Yeah. Yeah. And so with any microcode update uh, that we make, uh, customers are always, you know, asking about are there any performance impacts? So when the security update is applied, the mitigation is on by default. Um, are there any uh, performance impacts that customers should be aware of? Yeah, depending on the particular scenario, potentially yes. And the performance impact of this mitigation, it varies primarily with the frequency of usage of gather instructions in the application code. So where gather instructions are in what we call the hot path, which really means that they are frequently executed, there may be noticeable performance impact. But these are scenarios where gather instructions are, are in turn intentionally used for data parallelization, like what I you know, was calling vectorization before. So for example, in certain high performance compute environments. But these environments are also typically where they do not allow untrusted code to run or to share cores between users. Mm -hmm. And therefore, in these environments, they may choose to disable the mitigation in such cases. Of most workloads though, we have not seen any performance impact since most workloads do not use gathers. Uh, Jerry and I had the opportunity to interview Daniel, the researcher who found this issue, and he said he thought the industry needs to think about architecture designs and to avoid these types of vulnerabilities. Could you maybe talk a little bit about how we here at Intel approach this? Absolutely. And by the way, I completely agree with Daniel. And, you know, in new product development, we are constantly exploring ways to optimize our architecture and develop defense in depth measures to help mitigate against both known and unknown attacks. And this is the case on, a, on the newer platforms, including Alder Lake, Raptor Lake, and Sapphire Rapids, which, as you know, are not affected by GDS due to new defense in depth measures. And this is also why we appreciate the work of researchers like Daniel, mm -hmm. since their work can provide new insights into the security of microprocessors. Now, when it comes to microarchitecture security, we have a few guiding principles. First, it is about transparency. We do our best to inform customers of the microarchitectural issues affecting our products. And then we work with software partners to help make informed decisions and update software as needed to mitigate relevant issues, in many cases having to balance concerns about software complexity and performance considerations, as was the case with GDS. Mm -hmm. And finally, research and education. We invest in fostering academic research and our own internal research, and then educating customers about CPU security, microarchitectural security. 
Yeah, and again, like we said before, this is a complex issue and it may not impact most users. So what uh, resources have we made available for customers to determine if they need to take action? We've published three technical papers for this purpose. Uh, the first is a technical paper that describes gather data sampling in a little bit more detail, our mitigation, and also covers other topics such as how to disable the mitigation, as well as uh, some additional considerations for software developers. We've also published guidance for customers to conduct their own threat analysis to determine if the mitigation is needed in their environments. And finally, we provide a performance analysis paper to help customers further understand the type of workloads that might see a performance impact and and options on how to mitigate in life. Well, yeah. I, I think you know, Jerry and I really want to thank you, Vivek, for kind of calmly and clearly explaining this. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, it was always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks, Vivek. Well, that was a lot of good info from Vivek for uh, customers to consider. And just a reminder that uh, when the microcode is installed, the mitigation is enabled by default. Yes, and if customers decide that they want to turn it off, they can review our tech paper as well as our threat analysis paper for more details about how to do that and what yeah. things to think about. Well, uh, that's a wrap for this episode of Chips and Salsa. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.